folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of 10 Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is Mike Fatum. I am your community manager and also known as Ambassador Kell. And I'm joined by uh, two very special guests today. Uh, first up, it's uh, uh, Kevin Manthe, who is the um, composer for Star Trek Online. Welcome, welcome, Kevin. Hi. And, <laughs> and uh, we've got Craig Huxley, who uh, invented the voice of V'ger. <laughs> welcome, Craig. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Mike, and hey, Manthe, you are the man. I enjoy playing the <laughs> first score. Uh, I really enjoy the motifs and the, the oh, themes. You, you made it all come alive, for sure. All right. <laughs> so yeah. um, I guess let's start at the, the very super beginning of all of this. Um, uh, Craig, you invented the instrument, the blaster beam, that is the... Um, instrument that's used to make like the V'ger music and sound effects. How did that process start? Like where did the inspiration for that come from? Well, I, I was experimenting uh, before I patented the blaster beam. I was experimenting with all kinds of aluminum instruments, uh, something called the tubulons and um, different wind chimes. And, um, and then finally I came across um, the blaster beam as a, concept to um, tackle the symphony orchestra. And, uh, and it, it, it certainly did that in the TMP. I mean, it, it, uh, Jerry Goldsmith called that a concerto, his concerto for blaster beam. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. In front of a hundred piece symphony. And, uh, and so it, it, um, it's been a, a wild ride the last few years. It's come back so much into the Star Trek world live, and I've been enjoying it a lot. That's awesome. Um, so how, what is the blaster beam? How does it work? Well, it is 18 feet long. It's right behind me. And <laughs> it's got a whole mess of strings and magnets and crystals. And it's, uh, <laughs> it, it is, and I've got these special created cylinders and uh, it can be, you, it's, it's an aluminum uh, object that you can grapple with in many ways. Bowing, <laughs> sawing, um, banging, uh, sliding. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, it's a workout. And it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I'm getting back in shape now, now that the beam is back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, uh, you put a lot of, he put a lot of, like it was physical. I could tell it was physical for him when when he was doing it. And it's it's uh, you're it's so large. You know the 18 feet, so that depending on where the notes are, you're moving up and down as you're playing it. And um, and then the the physicality of I mean I didn't get to to use his cylinders, but I could tell the physicality of pushing down and really, it's kind of an aggressive thing to me. It's like I was telling some friends about it it reminded me of playing like it's almost like a heavy metal guitar without the distortion pedal. It's, <laughs> it's got that really big heavy metal kind of angry kind of vibe, but there's no distortion. It's just this really pure, yeah. low, deep sound that just it really, really rattles your bones. Yeah. Complexity. And it's uh, like you say, it's, it's uh, it's a heavy metal, super guitar <laughs> without the long hair <laughs> I, uh... this is my blaster beam coordinator and my <laughs> cherished daughter who works with me on all kinds of music projects fiona <laughs> hello fiona nice to meet you me too yeah we had such a great time recording the music for star trek online with kevin and we're really excited for people to get to experience the beam in full force. <laughs> it's amazing to have the uh, the original V'ger voice back for the game. That's really, really cool. So, Kevin, how long have you been doing music stuff for STO? Since the very beginning. Oh, wow. It was a huge amount of music written for the, you know, for the initial release. And then as these expansions have been coming along, I've been asked to, um, you know, add music as needed as they needed for specific things and um yeah th when this one came up they were specifically asking we needed to create music for viger uh they wanted a combat track and then they wanted two sort of ambient explore tracks and yeah. all related around that viger sound and vibe 
in really taking into consideration Jerry Goldsmith's you know original score for the the motion picture. So it was really um, exciting because and challenging and a little nerve wracking, you know, to kind of try to fill a little bit of those shoes. And then also to get that sound that Jerry created with the help of Craig's instrument and Craig's ingenuity and, you know, talent that he brings to the beam. Um, it was, I was like, how am I gonna get this sound? And I, I, I thought of a few different ways and I, I did come up with um, a couple sounds that I used when I was creating my music that then Craig played on. And then I've completely replaced those sounds. And in a pinch, you know, I think I could have done it. But <laughs> I I was like, I, I how do I, you know, I, I want to do this the right way. So I reached out to Craig and Fiona and um, I was just very pleasantly surprised that they were, not only were they up for it, but they were very excited uh, to be involved. And yeah. so, yeah, and then he, he told me how big the thing was. He's like, do you want me to bring it over to your studio or do you want to come over here? And <laughs> I felt bad for them. I'm like, oh, like, well, and also it's, you know, it's a little bit extra money because it's cartage. They call that cartage. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, how do you get that 18 foot thing, you know, in a truck or whatever? You gotta have a I'm assuming you don't throw it in the back of a Prius. <laughs> With a lot of red flags and yeah. <laughs> Well, Fiona, because she's the Blaster Beam coordinator, uh, setting things up and recording and filming on the Warner stage and the Fox stage, everything she does, but that includes carrying lift the beam, the beam <laughs> up escalators. Oh, and, God! Look at those bulging muscles oh here. <laughs> how, how heavy is it? Well, it's light for... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it's aluminum. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's not you know like four tons, but it's still got to be what like a hundred pounds somewhere around there. What, it's it's definitely uh, more than a, a bag of groceries. And it, you know our first step out of the studio here, where I did Michael Jackson recordings and Star Trek. Uh, you know, four decades I've been here doing music over that. Uh, but our first step is to come out to through the double doors to a what pool yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> hop over a pool oh yeah and, i mean uh, so it's, it's own, it's, it's own <laughs> so that, so that's uh, now i'm trying to imagine do you like like have one person lifting it up while the other person runs around the pool and tries to catch the other side <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> Yeah, and wild. And, oh. and there's the there's two huge. Uh, I, I would I don't know if they're guitar amps. Or what would you call them? The big speakers that yeah, big bass guitar yeah. amps. Mm -hmm. Bass guitar amps. Okay, I would think that those would be heavier than the beam almost. They're heavy too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's it's yeah. a it's wild, but you know you don't want as you're going up. We're in the canyons near Mulholland, and you don't want to be going too fast oh god yeah up or down because <laughs> oh, no. oh no don't want to lose the blaster oh. we need I to get want... you a small army of klingons to cart that thing around <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, sure. so um you mentioned that you've used it in you know all these different stages and you recorded for michael jackson just just for posterity what are some examples of things that we've heard the blaster beam on yeah, well, it's the opening of Beat It. I it's thought that so. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> part, of, part of the sound, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. And, uh, you know, all the the Alien trilogy, the Back to the Future trilogy, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean, it's, it's oh, that and my synthesizers have been part of many great movies. You know, it's, it's as I look back, you know, we as we do, um, sometimes do events with anniversaries and, and uh, it, it's, it's just phenomenal to be part of some of the really good cinema uh, and now the best Star Trek game. So, <laughs> hey, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, 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 had you yeah, ever heard of yeah. STO before you got the call from Kevin? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. And we're um, it, actually having a big year with Star Trek of all kinds with, Picard, yeah. uh, season three, oh. and 
uh, we had we were the guests of honor. Uh, Fiona and I attended the uh, Paramount uh, initial screening of uh, TMP renovation uh, uh, restoration Director's edition remix in yeah. Dolby Atmos, and they brought the beam out incredibly. Oh. And uh, it just boomed throughout the entire theater. Oh man! And the effects have been redone, and it's just such a a wonderful new way to watch TMP and experience the beam. I I picked up the uh, the Blu-ray of that the other day. I can't wait to pop it in and take a look. Yeah. That's it, that sounds amazing. Yeah. There's there's you know in my career with 150 movies and TV series, I'm usually. Um, I don't know about you, Kevin. I, I get disappointed with the final results of most <laughs> compared to having been in the process and the thrill and like, oh, here it is, full volume, and and let me feature this aspect, and there it is. But then by the time you mix it, and then it gets put in with dialogue and effects, and and it's usually for the musician, it it's some kind of um, uh, some disappointment there. This is one time with TMP that it's like, oh my God, they did it. <laughs> really yeah. brought it to the, you know, the height. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce Botnick was the mixer and he said he went back to the 16 track and remixed and he put the blaster beam often in the ceiling oh. of you. So wow. when have these events and obviously it's got some of the tones way down to the subwoofer <laughs> so you are being sandwiched in <laughs> when some of these events happen they, they're like what the hell is above my head you know, <laughs> this way and surrounding oh, and that's so cool yeah, great, great idea. Yeah, what a what a creative way to get the size of V'ger across that's really cool yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, Kevin, when you, um, you know, you heard we were doing V'ger, I know you did, because we had a V'ger sound in one of the uh, early cut scenes, because we were teasing the heck out of this, and right. that was, I'm guessing, your sound. Uh, and, I don't think so. Or was that actually, did you grab Craig for that, too? No, I think um, maybe your marketing guys or oh, uh, okay. Henry and his guys did that, so I wasn't related, but I'm sure they found something that you know, felt V'ger esque. Yeah. Okay. Well, where I was leading with that was, you know, okay. you started composing for, uh, for this and for the V'ger music they're having you write, um, right. and you thought to reach out to Craig. Ha yes. Was there just like a, you know, a Craig single signal you flew into the sky? What was that process? You know, how did you find him? <laughs> oh, it's easy. You know, I was, I, I'm on Instagram, so I, I looked him up there and I found <laughs> Fiona right away, and I reached out to her, and that was really cool to, you know, that Fiona's working with him and. And uh, so it was just, it was very easy. And then we, we got on Zoom, we did a nice little Zoom call and I got to geek out. Cause I, um, when I was, when I was starting out, I went to USC film scoring program and Jerry Goldsmith actually taught that program only oh. one year. And I was very fortunate hmm. to be there the year that Jerry was there. So, wow. Um, I, you know, we, he talked, we, I learned a lot from him and so did all of my classmates. Um, some of whom are very famous composers today. Um, and it was just amazing. And then to just know that Craig, you know, that I, I was talking to some somebody who not only, like I just got to meet Jerry in a, from a student relationship, but Craig got to work with him for many, many years as a synthesizer artist, you know, as a session player and as the blaster beam guy. Um, uh, so so that all coming together was really cool like just how we had a little bit of jerry in common and so we had so we, i was geeking out for sure during our call but um mostly it was just amazing to know that he still loves playing this instrument and he's excited about the star trek franchise and about how you know bringing it forward too not just like you know the goal with the music and all of all composers that are working on Star Trek is like, how do we move that sound forward while being respectful to the past? How do we make it fit the project we're working on currently? And one thing I realized after watching um, Star Trek, the motion picture was there was not a lot of action with the V'ger sounds. There was a lot of, there was like, in other words, there wasn't, you know, they didn't fight the V'ger. Yeah. Know? It was more of this really tense kind of, 
chess kind of game. And yeah. so in Star Trek Online, there is some combat related to the V'ger in some regard. And so I had to write some combat music. So that was kind of a fun challenge of, you know, okay, and I got to be in the Star Trek universe here. You got to do the V'ger, but it should be, you know, combat and really yeah. more intense kind of music. So, so follow up to that uh, question for both of you, whoever wants to answer it first. Um, how do you approach bringing uh, music for a franchise that's now been around for 56 years for writing or performing something new in that uh, that era? And like you said, keeping the classic feel, but still um, doing something new and exciting with it. Um. I, I think it's like, you know, really immersing yourself in the past and, and, and what it is that inspires you. And then at some point sort of letting that all go and, and doing you and, and letting, just <laughs> letting the fate of it all just kind of intermingle into, into, into something. And then as I'm going along, I'm like, okay, just little moments of introspection should I do this? Or, or if I do this, that might be a little too modern. If I do this, oh, that's cool. Like I noticed Jerry loved uh, woodwinds and woodwinds are not as often, you know, you don't hear flutes, piccolos and clarinets and oboes yeah. as often in film scores, unless it's maybe a romantic comedy, but it's not really an action-y kind of thing as much these days. But Jerry did use them in such a great way. And so that was one way that I brought back sort of that classic sound was you know, using more woodwinds. Mm-hmm. That's really so. cool. Yeah, that's neat. Little things like that. Right. How about you, yeah. Greg? <laughs> well, I have uh, been through so many iterations of Star Trek that it's a really <laughs> exciting to be here this year. When you asked the first question, you said something about the super beginning. Yeah. Uh, of well, I'll take you back to the super beginning. Want to explain where that begins? Sure. Yeah. Craig was in the original series. As oh. Kirk's nephew. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. He was in two episodes in TOS and yeah. um, was supposed to be a recurring character at the final Operation Annihilate season. And they tracked down that footage and it's in the Roddenberry vault. Oh, uh, cool. The bridge with Shatner and prepping to be you know, on this, uh, on this crew as a kid. So that's so wild that you now have oh. Wilson's character and combined, <laughs> um, right. as, as the next generation of, of a kid on the bridge. Wow. <laughs> we've yeah. got, we've got a, a full circle of Star Trek child actors going on that's here. Crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then later uh. became uh, Shatner's music director at the early cons. Oh, and okay. Oh. That was wild. Yeah. And then just, you know, having that connection to then do music uh, as a featured player in the scores is such a cool through line. <laughs> and then to continue on now is, is awesome. So when did you um, decide to go from acting to inventing 18 foot long instruments? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a. <laughs> Yeah, it's somewhere in my late teens. You know, it's like, okay, I've done this, been doing this for 10 years. Uh, let's move on. You know, I'm going to be 20 soon. I should you know, move on to oh, something. You know, I was actually a, a, a very expressive a jazz and classical pianist playing, you know, Beethoven concertos and uh, Rhapsody in Blue. I did my own um, uh, adaptation of that. And uh, when I was 14, so I I was uh, performing a lot on the Tonight Show and uh, specials and uh, on tours. So um, I was wanting to move into music. And then I got into a very experimental stage (laughs) with all these uh, microtonal instruments. Yesterday, we actually uh, were delivered this great instrument that was uh, that I had commissioned to be developed with a generalized microtonal keyboard and wow. it's called the uh, it's a clavichord huh. uh, kevin have you ever seen a clavichord not a harpsichord but a clavichord yeah oh Very yeah sp- i think i saw one of those at the john williams concert the other day actually <laughs> really? i think i think he brought that out for something what was it oh god one of the one of his famous songs i think he brought a clavichord out for <laughs> so this is you know celeste Maybe I am. 
<laughs> this this has uh, been a long process, and um, and then I've gone through all the iterations. I'm glad that uh, Jerry. I produced uh, the score number five uh, for Jerry, and then he came Jerry Goldsmith, and he came back. Then uh, with um, eight, nine, ten, um, uh, you know, with the movies, and um, you know, it's it, I worked with Roddenberry on some other projects. Uh, one called Planet Earth. And um, oh, yeah. where I did use, I did use my microtonal clavichord back then. So oh. it's it's you know because he he loved thing. Ron Berry loved uh, ideas that were you know way out there and futuristic, and uh, he wanted to explore what could be done. And uh, that that was you know he's obviously the initial momentum of that yeah. series. Oh, so great to see that it. He was frustrated because, you know, until Star Wars happened and did so well, the, they, the Paramount wasn't going any further. They kept trying to do TV series. And then then he got, you know, the OK to do the movie. Yeah. And Robert Wise, who had done, you know, such great sci fi work and began as what when he was tw in his early 20s. Yeah, the editor of a little movie called Citizen Kane. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there I was in my 20s uh, you know working with a, a great icon director and in meetings with him and Jerry and um, you know and, and sometimes you know getting stories about Citizen Kane so, so <laughs> that was awesome you know, oh I mean, my gosh wow. talk, talk, talk about sitting at the feet of the masters my god <laughs> yeah not really that's exactly yeah um well we're uh we're running up on the end of the time for this zoom call here so i'm gonna i'm gonna fire off uh one last question um and i'll fire it off to both of you but we'll start with kevin uh kevin what's your your favorite memory of scoring for star trek oh i i, I get i mean my freshest and probably my most favorite would definitely be working on th this v'ger <laughs> <laughs> to work with Craig on and use you know such an iconic instrument has been really fun. So I mean that's an easy that's an easy question. <laughs> you know. Nice. I, I mean it's always fun to uh, in general on pro, you know I've been fortunate to work on like Spider Man and Marvel characters and it's always fun to be like oh well I got to work I got to do a theme for Iron Man or you know Venom. <laughs> In fact, I've done like three, three different themes for Venom over the course of the year. <laughs> and um, not, now just like to be able to add to that canon of like, you know, V'ger and the Romulans and, you know, the, the various, all the various iconic things that come through the Star Trek universe. And so that, that's always a joy and an honor to nice. be able to have a little piece of that. Nice. And you did the, um, the Terran guitar combat music too, right? Yeah, yeah. And I just, I just wanted to let you know, everyone loves that. The fans have been losing their mind over it for about a year now. So, <laughs> uh, Craig, how about you? Favorite memory of Star Trek? Yeah, I, I my favorite memory is to uh, to continue on with it and see where it's going. And it, it's that's that's what's amazing to me is that this is still going on and and expanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is wild mm -hmm. so the, this this you know it, it it i love thinking back over the decades and and uh and sometimes kevin and i would be talking about you know certain things that were done in tmp and so then we would try that out yeah. against themes and and you know it's it's um uh, it's wild to to refresh um what was definitely great and and bring it into here we are, 2022. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. 56 years later, man, and still going and still kicking ass. That's, That's great. Right. Big bang. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Kevin, Fiona, Craig, thank you all so much for joining me, uh, and thank you so much for the work you've done for the game. We're all uh, so excited to hear the new scores as we're playing today. Uh, for those of you at home, as you're watching this, uh, 
uh, Star Trek Online Ascension is out right now on PC. Go play it. Let evil Will Wheaton rant at you for a while. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they want to find out more about your work, uh, where should they go? Uh, Instagram's Wait, my Kevin. favorite. Yeah, it's just Kevin Manthe Music on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, spell that, Kevin. Oh, okay, uh, Manthe is, well, it's Kevin, and Manthe is M-A-N-T-H-E-I. Your names are actually on the screen right now, oh, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I put a little caption It is a hard too. one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Craig, Craig's got a good name, you know. Craig and Fiona have good, easily, easy uh, spelling names. Yeah. Uh, how about... Yeah. yeah. Oh. And Fiona has been expanding the site with helpers that... Um, yeah, all kinds of the uh, platinum albums I've gotten from all the different um, pop songs of the 80s and 90s and albums with uh, Prince and uh, Michael Jackson. and Craig uh, named his music studio The Enterprise, of course. <laughs> nice. First, there's a lot of info on all the life trajectory that has gone on with, uh, with music and Star Trek. Yeah, I love your website, Craig. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's really fun. I've I've awesome. browsed through it as well. Oh well, good job, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, cool. All right, well, folks, uh, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, for everybody at home, uh, live long and prosper. Jolan, true, Kapla, whatever <laughs> works for you. We will oh. see you next time. <laughs> hey, folks. <laughs> <laughs>